really down exciting. here with Phil Curley. <laughs> Uh, one of the big venture capitalists, physically big as well, because you That's and I are both true. That's true. You know, of the over six foot club, um, and and yet in stature, we're no Steve Jobs. That's true. Um, Very true. Talk to me about you know you cover so in addition to being a venture capitalist and, and knowing people up and down Silicon Valley, uh, back in your days as a Wall Street analyst, you covered Apple. That's right. Between '93 and '96 for CS First Boston, I was the analyst on on Apple and it, you know one of the things that makes what Steve has done as the CEO of Apple so remarkable is from where he came from so if you if you go back to that moment in time um, it was a company that was in disarray. It was fairly chaotic. I think they were grasping for a strategy. They're losing a ton of money. I, mean, yeah. I said earlier in the show they lost uh, over $800 million a yeah. year before we came the, back. And, and everyone knew why, right? The Wintel architecture had just outplayed them. Microsoft had a distributed model that took advantage of multiple hardware vendors, and it had worked. And so there was no question. Microsoft, Intel were the platform companies, and this game was over. And so, you know, it's amazing. In Silicon Valley, when you have a company on the outs, there are so many job opportunities around here. You get the brain drain, the creative talent leaves. So that's that's where he started from. That was what the company was like when he well, came back in. Well, I think he in. said since then that the company was probably about 90 days from bankruptcy. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Yeah, so that, to me, that makes it even more amazing. Now, one of the things when we're talking to people about what Steve Jobs did that was so different and in his role as CEO was that rather than have committees and have projects presented to him, that he was involved in, in a level of detail that you didn't usually see with, or yeah. you still don't usually see with a CEO. I think that's right. I think that's probably his most unique trait. And I also think it may be the least mimic mimicable. I don't know if that's a word. But I think a lot of people say, oh, I want to be like Steve. But there's no CEO that gets involved in those levels. Ford, the Ford CEO is not laying out the, right. the graphic. I, well, I have a funny story. so? I mean, tell me, you've seen this. Yeah, I, I have a funny story on this. I was out on a bike ride with an Apple executive a few years back and I said you know can you introduce me to the product manager that determines which icons are on the embedded home page of, of the iPhone right. because we've got some great companies Zillow open table and I love to talk to him about getting something on there and he just starts laughing this person I'm with starts laughing I said why are you laughing he goes Steve makes those decisions of the icons yes the icon placement on the iPhone that's amazing I mean, that that's a little worrisome. If he, if 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 the guy who's making such crucial decisions that some of those you, some of the most important yeah. venture capitalists are concerned with, is leaving the company. I, yeah, I, I'm not. I don't know the inner workings of Apple today, and I don't know the executives that well. So you know, it's hard for me to opine. But I would, if someone asked me, what will the number one challenge be? You know, and Steve's still around for now in a role that's where he's able to do these things. Right. But is Steve's attention to detail and his design intuition? You know, who picks up that slack? And do they have the confidence and the authority to push things through well, the way we've he We've got is. a story coming up a little later on the show about Johnny Ives, who is the designer, yeah. who gets credit for being the design genius. Um, but I wonder, when you look at, at the companies that you uh, try to coach up to become great companies, uh, whether they're the ones that have just gone public, like you mentioned, or, you know, Open Table and Zillow and so yeah. on, or smaller ones, do you suggest to them be like Steve? No, no, not on that one element. I, I think there are very few great leaders. If you were to just take a picture of a whole bunch of great leaders, most of them are good at delegation, getting other people right, to right. make decisions because organizations are so large and no one has the capacity to be an expert in so many things. I, th I think that is his most unique element that he's been successful in doing it, that. It's my understanding that what they did, Lashinsky, uh, Adam Lashinsky, you, yeah. you and I both know that wrote this great story in Fortune magazine a few months ago that talked about the decision-making process within Apple today. And among the things that sort of struck me was that Steve and his top deputies have a meeting every Monday morning where they go over just a handful of things every week. Yeah. And those are the most important projects. And they go back to them every week. And maybe there's progress and maybe there isn't. But that is, they're at the top level focused on just a few things. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's another element to it that, that's attributed to him quite frequently, which is the narrowing of, of the issues and focusing on the key things and removing features. You know, you don't think about a product company as removing features, the decision not to put flash in the iPad. Right. There's a fundamental reason for that, but that's a gutsy bet. Right, right, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the guy has unbelievable now, skills. I want to throw it forward, too. Um, you know, uh, throw it forward by looking back, which is to say, in the PC industry, yeah. you have seen a lot of disasters. We have seen problems with inventory, problems yeah. with components. This is the world that Tim Cook was in charge of as he was elevated to interim CEO and now yeah. CEO. What is the success of Apple in its um, uh, product delivery tell you about Tim Cook? 
Um, you can only uh, you can only say great things because the company. I mean, to think about what this company has done. They started at two billion dollars when in market cap when he came in. Today they're at three forty three and bigger than Microsoft and Intel combined. That's massive. And, and that's why I tweeted yesterday, I don't know if we'll ever see CEO, CEO execution of this level. Of course, it's not just the CEO execution. You got what Tim Cook's done in operation. You look at the store business, which is getting more um, revenue per square foot than any retailer ever thought about getting. So clearly yeah. there are other people in the organization that are doing great we'll things. We'll see how they step to the fore now. Yeah. Uh, Bill Gurley, Benchmark, uh, really glad to have you on uh, for you. your insight.